This is the latest electric outboard motor from a Norwegian company called ThrustMe, but the motor itself is called Kicker, perhaps for good reasons. I'm not sure that ThrustMe is an ideal brand name in the UK, but it's a very neat little electric outboard motor. And if I show you what it consists of, when you open the rather nice little carry case, is this neat arrangement here. So you can see the head of the motor is up here. There's a shaft leading down to a very tiny little enclosed propeller. So that actually uses propeller technology, allegedly from a submarine, that actually increases the thrust from a very small propeller. So it very neatly tucks into the bag. There's retaining straps, straps that keep it all nicely in place. And you can see the charger in here, that all stores there. And then in the lid of the case, there's even a pocket for the manual. And it's a very well done manual actually, it's very nice and clear. Uh, it's got it in English and all other languages, but it's very nice and clear, good clear pictures, tells you exactly how to use it. And actually having tried it, it really is worth a read. There's quite a lot of little adjustments that you can do to make it fit your boat. But I'll show you some of these in more detail now, but I just wanted to show how clear that whole instruction manual is. And you can see that this is the available power. So it is a thousand watt motor with a 259 kilowatt hour battery. It's a thousand kilowatt, a thousand watts for the motor and 259 watt hours. So as you can see, you're on maximum power, you're not gonna have a huge amount of range. It says less than 30 minutes at full step six. But you'll see when we go out and test it that you don't necessarily need to use full power. So what's different about it? First thing is it's incredibly light. So the battery is actually contained within the shaft here. So it's got a built-in battery. You don't take it out, you charge it while it's still in the motor itself. But the joy of that is that it's incredibly light. So even certainly compared to a petrol electric outboard, a petrol backboard, and even compared to an electric outboard like Torquedo or something. So this entire thing weighs just 4.7 kilos. And I have weighed that myself and checked it and that is indeed the case. So it's very easy to hold one-handed, which makes a massive difference when you're trying to pass it up to a boat or pass it down to the tender. If you can carry it with one hand, it means you can steady yourself with the other. So let's just assemble it, and I'll show you what it consists of. So again, one-handed, you can just pop it on the boat. I'm using it on a stand here, and just put it down in place. So first up, You've got the head unit. You can see that rather than a conventional metal bracket, the whole thing is plastic. So the actual bracket itself, the adjuster handle, it's all sturdy ABS plastic. So get that in position. You can see it's got nice twisting clamps. Clamp it into place. There we go, just let's get it roughly attached. Now there's a cord here, that's just a retaining safety strap, so you attach that to the boat to make sure that if you do drop it, you don't actually lose the motor. Now there's an adjustment here. This is partly steering friction, so you can do that, but it also means you can actually lift the entire motor out. If you undo that enough, you can adjust the height of the motor. So this collar here is actually adjustable, and you can adjust that so that you've got the motor at the correct height. So you've got a single shaft length, but it means you can actually adjust how high the motor sits within that bracket there. So if you want to, if you need a long shaft, you literally just undo that collar, loosen that off, and then the whole thing can sink further down. You can have a longer shaft. I've set it to my boat and it's worth doing this actually, because you'll see that when you do get it all attached, you want it to be able to lean forward without actually fouling the transfer of the boat or these clips. So if we go back to the bag and take out, so here is, the tiller extension and this clips on here so that's two little retaining lugs just clip that in and you can see those lugs then pop out and then this unscrews and you can slide it in and out so if you want a longer tiller you can slide it out or push it in again to suit your particular boat and in this case I've put a little uh, there's a velcro strap here where you can put the remote control so let me show you the remote control that is here. So this is what you actually use for the throttle. Rather than having a twist throttle on the steering arm, there is a remote control. And this two slots in there, and that is because that is charged as an induction charger. So when you charge the battery, 
in the motor itself. There will also induction charge remote control. So you leave that in there for induction charging, but not when you're actually driving it. So that's why when you want to drive it, you pop it out and you can put it in that little neoprene holder. I need two hands to do that, but I'll do it in a minute so that you can control it from there or you just wear it round your wrist and use it in your hand just like that. So pop it round your wrist and then you can use it like that. And the reason for that is because you, there is also a bracket so that you can use it for on a kayak or a paddleboard and use it as a motor for that. So hence you're going to need a remote control rather than relying on the tiller arm. But if you're using it in a boat, I find it easiest to put it in this holder here and then control it from there. There we go. So a couple of other things. There's the charging cord and the cable. That all plugs in and I've been charging it overnight. But it will probably charge a bit quicker than that if you need it to. I've got an adapter at the moment just because it's got a Euro plug on it. This is the very first prototype so I'm sure they will do a proper UK plug for that. And that will clip neatly in there. There is a spare propeller too. Could be handy if it gets fouled. And then there is the kill cord. Which if I pull that out, it's got a float on it and that's a little magnetic kill cord. So when I slot that into place, that all comes alive and you can see there's a little readout screen here showing you how much power there is, it's 86%. And then as soon as you've got that on, obviously you put that around your leg and you're good to go. And then the remote control comes into its own, press that button and it starts wearing away. You can just see it there. You don't want to run it too long without water, but there you go, stop, forwards, stop, reverse, stop. Okay, so we'll get it on a boat and give it a test on the water too. Now the reason it's worth spending a bit of time getting all the adjustments right is because when I first tried it on the boat I found that when I tried to tilt the engine up this was fouling on the bracket and that was because I had it right down at its maximum length and there wasn't quite enough clearance. So by playing around for a bit I've now moved the collar down lifted the whole engine up a bit and now there is enough clearance between this part of the engine and the bracket to make sure that it does tilt up nice and high the water. Previously I could only tilt it about as far as that uh, which meant that when I lifted up the front of the boat the boat to pull it on its little dolly wheels that was scratching on the slipway so now having moved everything up it does tip all the way up and then the only issue you've got is that the tiller arm goes in between these two brackets so you can't now move it from side to side not that you necessarily need to but it does mean that you can set it wherever you want and of course once you're in the right position tighten up this handle here and that locks it in position so let's put it in the water and give it a test okay we're afloat. Give a little push off. <laughs> now we can oh, undo that, put it down and just while we get a bit deeper I'm just going to lock it off at that kind of height, hit the button and you can see that we're thrusting along quite nicely at that angle just until we get out into deeper water and that's just with one bar of thrust on it. So certainly with just me in the boat, it's going remarkably well, even at that funny angle. There is no wind and no tide really. So one up seems to be performing absolutely fine. And now we're getting a deeper water, I'm just gonna put it back into neutral just by pressing that button. Let's undo the hinge again, put it all the way down lock it off and you can see I've put that retaining collar through the boat there just so that if anything does go wrong it means it, we won't lose the engine altogether so now we're all the way down and one bar of thrust going very nicely pop it up two bars three bars four all the way, five, and six. Now, full whack, we are going along really very nicely. I haven't even lifted the wheels up. 
but what you can see is that the percentage we're on 84 percent at the moment and when you're going along at full thrust that will start to go down relatively quickly there we go 83 percent so that does start to get through it but actually you don't really need certainly in these kind of conditions you don't need to use full power so there we go down to 82 percent so you can see it does get through it quite quickly full power but if I knock it down to three, we're still going very nicely. Let's go. Now we've got a bit of tide now. You can see there's a bit of tide blowing on that boat. But we are still making useful headway, albeit not as quick. So what I did find, I put it on a heavier boat. This is a, a 2.3 meter tender. Uh, and a friend of mine tried it on 2.7 and he's a fair bit bigger than me too and what he did find was that trying to go into a headwind on a bigger boat with a heavier load he really did need to use five or even six and his concern was that if he had to do that regularly into a headwind or a head tide it would be a bit of a struggle and you'd get through the battery quite quickly and he keeps his boat about 500 meters offshore so it's a, a one kilometer trip every time. And he found that using it full whack to get punch into a head tide and about half whack to get back, that he did use about half the battery power doing that one kilometer. So he was concerned that maybe if you're regularly carrying a heavy load and a bigger boat into a bit of a headwind or a tide, it might struggle a bit. But having said that, with just one up in the smaller boat, it seems to go remarkably well. And as you can hear, it's completely silent. It's very easy to control. And above all, it's that wonderfully light motor. It makes it so easy to lift on and off. And that's what he really enjoyed about it. He's got a sailing boat, and it was an absolute joy for him to be able to lift it up one-handed, pass it up to his partner in the boat, while still keeping one hand free to steady himself on the boat itself. So the lightness is a huge, huge benefit. It's just a question of whether you think it's got enough power and enough range for the job you need to use it for. For me, my boat is only 100 yards or so offshore and it's usually only me or perhaps one other person in this little 2.3 meter tender. And for me, it's absolutely fine. It's pushing along very nicely three I've gone up to four now just to make a bit better headway into the tide but it strikes me as a very clever bit of kit it probably hasn't got quite the thrust of the torpedo or the e-propulsion spirit so if you really need to a, a bit more power a bit more grunt it might be worth investing in one of the bigger motors but if lightness ease of use are the key then this really does do the job very nicely indeed i'm impressed by it